everybody. Welcome back. Today is an exciting day. It's exciting! Um, because I am uh, introducing a new series of stuff that's going to be on the vlog. And I've been working on this for bloody ages, so I'm very excited to finally be able to talk to you about it. Papa, it's a new thing, it's a new thing, it's a new thing, a new thing, a new thing. It's a new thing. It's new. Um, <laughs> yes. I decided back in October time, probably maybe November, that I wanted to do something different and a little bit more challenging and give myself a kind of a longer term project. And so the idea came to me of recreating iconic outfits from recent history. The idea is that I spend time on these kind of slightly bigger, longer term, more involved, in-depth projects. It's going to go over a series of videos. So if um, whereas some things I will cover, you know, in one film, these will be projects which go out over a number of weeks and you can actually see the process from beginning to end. Um, they're intended to go through everything from start to finish, from research all the way through to the final project and be as true to the originals as I can make them with the caveat that I won't have actually seen the original in most cases because it's all done from pictures and film and other assets that might be around. So one of the things that I want to ask you guys is what would you love to see? Um, there are many, many outfits that have been worn in wonderful films, um, appeared in artwork, uh, generally have gone down in pop culture history from sort of the last century. And I'd love to get a sense from you of what you think are iconic or interesting outfits. Because it's about the sewing and about the construction, I would love things that are interesting or different from that perspective so I want something where you can you can think oh actually that would be a really interesting thing to try and recreate and make for whatever reason uh, so what I'm asking is if you could please um, in the comments section leave your feedback of course because I always love to hear your feedback but um, any suggestions you have of dresses that you have seen or love or your favorite film and actually there is just certain outfits that make you happy and uh, want to jump around the room Jump around. No, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do the song. Um, <laughs> um then please put them in the comments and I will have a look through and see um what of that feels like it's gonna hit the brief in terms of being within my kind of level of experience and uh something interesting that I think would be great for you guys to then watch on film. So the first dress that I decided to make was the most iconic of all, uh, and that is the Marilyn Monroe dress from the Seven Year Itch. It is iconic in many ways, but it's one of the only dresses, I think, from the film that you would recognise whether you saw the Seven Year Itch or not. It's such a famous image of Marilyn with her dress up round her ears. Can't think why that one went famous, um, that it's easy to recognise no matter who you are and what you know about film or not. It's also a relatively simple in construction. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's easy, but it's not you know, so complex that it was going to be way outside my comfort zone from the first time I tried this. Uh, so with all of that being said, um, I uh, I will get on with the actual content. Really helpful. Right, so to the details, I sketched out what I thought I wanted the dress to be and to try and get the technical details of how it was constructed down, um, which you can see here. So the first thing to say is it's pleated all the way through. So the bodice, um, the midsection and the skirt are all heavily pleated. Um, on the front, on the back actually the bodice isn't pleated, it's, it's, um, it's flat, but it, it's, it's pleated all the way through, which presents a challenge, but is also something I didn't remember from kind of recollecting the dress. So there was something there about, okay, well, I'm gonna have to pleat the whole thing. Um, the top is obviously a halter neck, but it's actually cut very high under the arms, so it's got quite a wide angle here. Um, and the front is a very narrow V, cut very low, but it's a very close fitting, um, it's not got a kind of bowed out neckline, it's actually quite straight and narrow when you look at it um, on the photograph, so that was one thing. The middle section actually has a belt running around it, which actually is a fake belt, so if you look at the back of the dress, the crossover detail on the front is, is stitched onto the front of the dress. And then there's a the bottom half, I realised. So there's a band around the bottom with a bow. That's a detachable belt that went over the top. And then the top part is stitched on 
um, to look like a belt, but it's actually not. So the only real part that sort of clips on as a belt would is that bit just above the waistband of the skirt. And then the skirt itself is a cir full circle skirt and it's sun ray pleated and it's got a centre front seam and a centre back seam. And you can see that from some of the photographs that are taken when the skirt is right up and it was taken from underneath. You can see the seam um, running up the middle of the skirt. Terribly handy if you're trying to recreate it. Pleating has become a thing I know a lot more about as a result of doing this project. And I am going to talk in much more detail about that because it was one of the things I spent a lot of time on. In this video, you'll see that I did two different versions of the skirt using two different sort of pattern drafting techniques to get the full pleats. And the second one is actually much closer to what I eventually went with. But it was a really interesting process trying to one, work out the mathematics of that because it's quite complicated and two, to try the different versions of doing the pattern drafting and see which one worked better. So I think that's um, that's basically it for um, this bit of the video. I'm going to be back uh, at the end to chat to you a little bit more about what's coming up later in the series and some of the other things that I've done. But in the meantime, uh, have a look at this. I hope you find it interesting and enjoy it and I will see you in a little bit. Right, so this first section, I'm just going through the mock-up. So mock-up one was very much for fit and shape to just try and establish whether I could even do this thing that I had come up with a brilliant idea for. Um, this first bit is the draping of the bodice which is the very first thing I did to try and see whether I'd be able to get the right shape or not because it was probably going to be the most challenging bit and I realised that pleating the fabric first and then draping it was definitely the way forward. Uh, I then decided I needed to draft the section that sits from the waistline just to underneath the bust because it's the one that really has to fit properly and carries most of the weight of the rest of the dress. So this is just the drafting process. The circle actually shows the bust measurement. So if you squashed a bosom flat, that's how big it is. Pretty scary. Uh, and I put quite a few princess seams in here because I knew I needed the fit to be good. And generally more seams means you can fit things a lot more easily. So it was intentionally split up into teeny little pieces so that I could then get the fit as, as good as I could. Uh, and then it was cut out into the various pieces and sewn up. One of the funnest things about doing mock-ups is you get to scribble all over fabric in Sharpie, which feels like a bit of a rebellious thing to do in my geeky, particularly dull brain. So yeah, when that's all sewn together, you get a piece that looks a bit like that, and you do two of them and sew them down the centre front seam in the middle. So then it was just a matter of basically pinning everything together. I wasn't ever going to sew this up properly, I was very much trying to get a sense of whether it was going to look right. Um, which it pretty much did. And the skirt pattern that I drafted was a quarter circle but divided into even sections for the pleats and then I split, I numbered them so I didn't get them in the wrong order, and then split them up and add in a piece as I'm doing here which is double the distance of number one. And that forms the distance that sits behind the pleat so when you fold it away that's what disappears. So I then did all of those in white, partly because I ran out of fabric and partly because it's easier for you to see what's going on and cut the entire pattern into slices and then added the white stuff in. And you can see that once you fold it all down, you get a beautifully pleated skirt that goes back to your original measurement um, without you distorting the distance needed for your waist, etc. So then it's just a matter of trimming it up and making it into the fabric uh, version and cutting notches in to mark your pleats. So once I've done that, it was just pinning it to the dress form and I realised from this that the actual, the pleating was fine geometrically but it didn't quite sit right on the bodice and it didn't sit tightly enough so I knew that in the next version I was going to have to fix that and work out a different way of doing the skirt. So it was really useful and from a pattern drafting perspective it worked fine but the um, it didn't quite look right. So the next thing to do is move on to fabric that was slightly more similar to what the final version was going to be and I used a very cheap polyester um, crepe to sheen. Polyester is useful because synthetic fabric holds pleats a lot better than natural fabric so useful both because it's cheap and because actually the final version was going to be synthetic. So on this version I redid the pleating to try and get the finish a bit crisper. And what you can see here is uh, me using a lot of steam <laughs> to, to set the pleats. You do need a lot. Uh, but I used a pleating board that I made myself. So you can just 
use cardboard, map out as you would on fabric what your pleats are and then score the cardboard and bend it and break it to create the pleated finish and then you just tuck your fabric in and iron over the top and you end up with a much cleaner, straighter finish. So that was good. And then for the skirt, after a very useful conversation with someone else who's done this before, I realised that if I just tripled the waistline measurement, I could do a circle skirt that would fold down to the right size without me needing to insert any pieces like I had done before. So this version that you can see me scribbling away on the floor is a quarter circle but with a th three times my waist measurement at the waist, which means it's also three times at the hem. And you can see that the pleats end up being that sunray pattern and you can then do exactly the same thing, break that cardboard, um, score it and pleat it and um, uh, and then use it to pleat your fabric. Another thing I realise is if you use vinegar, a solution of vinegar and water on your, on your synthetic fabric and iron it, steam it in, it helps set your pleats. Uh, something about chemistry but it works and it means that you do slightly smell like a chip shop for a couple of minutes but the smell goes away pretty quickly so I used that mixture on all of my pleating after that and that really helped keep everything nice and crisp and make sure that it, the pleats didn't drop out too quickly so this is just a sample that I did for the skirt but you can see that it's starting to get a bit neater in terms of the pleating and then I just recreated the bodice and the skirt in the fabric that I thought was going to be a little closer to what I finally used just to get a sense of whether it was going to work and the skirt although it looks incredibly crumpled here um, which is partly a result of it being chucked on the floor and partly a result of me pinning it a lot it did actually work from a geometry perspective um, and was exactly right it's just that the finish is sort of tricky to get right um, when you're doing it at home but yeah this was mock-up too So that um, was the end of mock-up two. That's as far as mock-up two got to before I moved on to the final version. I felt I had a pretty good basic shape and construction that was gonna get me there. It was still not how it was going to look and it was not how it looked in my mind's eye um, at the end, but it was plenty, it was good enough for me to then move on to the final version. As a result of doing the pleating process for the skirt and doing it twice, I as I mentioned in my little comments in that video, I got the maths right, which was a complete joy. And geome geometri geometrically, no, geometrically, geome mm. Anyway, from a geometry perspective, it was correct. But actually getting the pleating as crisp and neat as I wanted is very difficult to do at home. So I decided that I would get the skirt professionally pleated and um, I'm gonna talk a lot more about that and you're going to get to see the process, which is super cool and I slightly loved because lovely people who pleated it for me allowed me to go and film it. So yeah, I'm really excited. I'm. This is by far one of the most enjoyable things that I've done. It's been lovely to have a really long-term project that I kind of came up with from scratch and have seen all the way through to the end. I really hope you enjoy it and please do suggest, um, as well as commenting, because I'd love to hear your feedback, um, please do also suggest other, other um, dresses that you would love. Um, I really hope you enjoy this series. I'm super excited about it and um, I will see you again soon.